Kelso Harlequins, uh, if they win this, they go top of the table. They won their own tournament last time out. Andrew Skeen is the man in the middle. Good to see Andrew Skeen back at the Mellor Sevens again, if not playing. He's a man who's got uh, all the medals, all the set uh, for the Kings of the Sevens. But he's refereeing Renau and uh, looking after this one. It's Graham Dodds and Dale Clancy. And it is going to be Kelso Harlequins and Arson to get play underway in the Jim Telfer Cup final. And it's been gathered there by Aaron Weatherhead. He does well to spin out a contact and into the hands of the captain, Mark Glenn, a player who I've been thoroughly impressed with. And he's now got the ball back in his hand. He fends off the first one, then the second goes round the outside. And now Mark Glenn's got a chance to try and house this downfield. And Weatherhead is chasing after this. It's just bounced into Kelso Harlequin's hand as it's Archie Barber who gathered it. He's got Coulter for support outside, but... The ball kicked forward, is just ricocheted and a scrappy start to this final, but you'd expect nothing less as both teams are probably nervy and a bit tetchy in terms of what they're going to do, scared to make any mistake, but it now comes over to this far side and Sam Wood is just in the shadows of the, the famous Green Yard stand, offload into the hands of Harris Ross. He got the opening score and the, the win against Melrose in the semi-final. Jed doing well to clear out on the, at the ruck, and, but it's come back to Kelso yet again. Coulter holding his width, the ball is eventually distributed to him he bounces back in field as the, the supporting player runs the loop but not able to gather the ball as Utterson just bounces it off the ground and it then goes underneath his spell, now back to the hands of Harris Ross, he puts on some pace then the physicality comes in but Matthew Domingo does well just to stand up his opposite number Sam Wood now going back in field Kelso very patient with the ball in hand Utterson being one of them the ball out the back there is just uh, run aground and it's now been hacked down by Jed Thistle. An opportunity there to try and break free, but Kelso shown patience. Shown patience, yeah, but you like you probably say from the first sort of 30, 40 seconds that the you know the defences have been on top pretty organised defences. You notice both teams are, are defending with a flat line of seven, which you know obviously that's been that's been under coach and manual, but it's 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 one that I don't like. I like to have that sweeper in behind, but uh, you know. So, so hopefully, the Kelso and Jed players pick up on that. They look at these little dinks over the corner. And the, the two bits of joy of nearly had have actually been from kicks. It's uh, a line out there, and it's went to the, the hands of uh, Jed Thistle. They've got now man on man, and they just get the ball into some space, and it's a knock on there with the try line begging, and it's just been fumbled. It was a bullet of a pass there uh, from Archie Barber. So it wasn't Archie Barcher, it was uh, Matthew Palmer, sorry. And he tried to throw the, an absolute rocket of a pass. And it's just not being gathered correctly. And eventually it does end up being a knock-on. And you Matthew Beaton was the, the player who's knocked the ball on. You just wonder, Dale, in finals like that, these big moments. You know, there's always big moments in these matches. And, you know, you've got to take them when they come. When these opportunities like that come along, you've got to take them. Kelso hack downfield that's now on the, the halfway line and Beaton who was uh, guilty of the earlier faux pas does well to gather that now Bruce Weatherhead he finds his teammate in Palmer Palmer's got Domingo Domingo's got the other Weatherhead now and it's Aaron he palms back in field he gives the ball to his brother Bruce who gets it back it's almost the uh, back guard and stuff from the, the two brothers now Mark Glenn linking up he's uh, been tapped round the ankles and fumbles towards the ground and Kelso Harlequins do well to isolate the Jed Thistle captain and win the penalty just inside the Jed Thistle half but they pass it back towards the halfway line now a little loop around as Kelso Harlequins are looking for some options but it's a great hit there and Bruce Weatherhead who's shot out of nowhere and just managed to dislodge the ball from William Tweedy now Domingo Domingo finds Aaron Weatherhead he sizes up his options and gives the ball back to his brother Bruce and the, the overlap was there and now the option is there as well because Xander McTaggart has got some space but Bruce Weatherhead tries to gather the ball and just palms it forward into the clutches of a Kelso Harlequins player now the ball is spilled across the 22 a little cute interchange on the, the cusp of their own 22 
They now eight up the ground in towards the 10 metre line. And pops off the ground, but Andrew Skeen just explaining that there was no release of the ball. And it's going to be a penalty to Jed Thistle. Domingo finds Weatherhead. Weatherhead has found a little gap and just puts the one-handed offload. Something we've seen quite a lot so far this afternoon. But now Bruce Weatherhead, he's got some space, goes back in field. Lost the ball over to his brother Aaron Weatherhead, but it's a forward pass. Andrew Skeen has just spotted that forward pass a sarcastic round of applause from the spectators down below but certainly nothing given between these two sides no nothing at all it's, it's actually really good to watch you know the defences as I said earlier they're still on top but you know they're trying they're trying and just that little one mistake there from the Jed the Jed Thistle boys and it just slipped forward and uh, no, you can just tell there's no love lost and this is a this is a big one it's a big scalp for either side here tonight you know, to win the, the very first Jim Telfer Cup it's a, it's a big thing for these boys and, and quite rightly so Utterson looping round with uh, William Tweedy William Tweedy finds Coulter on that far side a player who's uh, found space in this final quite hard to come by but does work hard with the ball in hand and a couple of Jed Thistle players round about him offloading to allow the ball to filter its way through to the stand side here now Harris Ross he just bringes the ball forward Jed Thistle doing well to fight that standing tall as Aaron Weatherhead has now been knocked on and the referee just uh, judging it Matthew Domingo is uh, just came in from the side there and guilty of uh, perhaps not fully understanding his position on the field and now Kelso Harlequins with the penalty they tap and go a little quick dance and William Tweedy is uh, looking to try and lure the Jed Thistle players onto him a good bit of footwork from Kelso Harlequins but great defence there from Matthew Palmer as well from Jed Thistle he manages to wrap up his opposite man but Kelso Harlequins again looking very confident and comfortable with the ball in hand and that's been expertly intercepted there by Aaron Weatherhead and the only unfortunate thing for him is that he was too close to the touchline because his boot just grazed the whitewash on the, the stand side here because he watched that and he was in the great position to try and steal that ball but certainly nothing given between these two sides still. No, absolutely not. It's really it's quite intense, isn't it? It's, it's uh, Both defences standing up really tall just now and Kelso got more possession but uh, just not getting anywhere with this good Jed defence Harris Ross breaks out the first challenge and both teams probably physically just uh, cancelling each other out the handling and the, the ball playing skills from Kelso Harlequins is something which we've uh, perhaps seen uh, quite a lot from uh, Jed Forrest in uh, Sevens years gone by like to play with the ball in hand they'll pretty much play anywhere in the field and Kelso Harlequins are kind of taking a leaf out of their book but as they stab it downfield they cough up cheap possession it's now going to be a throw into the line out for Jed Thistle yeah it's the first real chance in the last sort of two or three minutes that Jed have had any real possession and hopefully they can win this scrum ball and, 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 and keep the ball and try and use this width a bit more you know they've, they've said it in the semi-final where they, they came through that game but I think Jed need to use the width a bit more from, from first receiver not always on the cut back and going down that blind side and using the width using the rugby field Mark Glenn pops the ball into the scrum and then this is where the, the pace and the big loop in Arkin runs are looking to try and pay dividends for Jed Thistle and now they get the ball into the hands of the speedster and that's an excellent tap tackle but he manages just to roll out of it power back to his feet and get the ball offloaded to Bruce Weatherhead he passes back to Mark Glenn but he's just not there in the right position it's then Xander McTaggart he finds his captain and he's thumped into touch and you can hear the very vibrant Kelso Harlequin support underneath and in the blink of an eye, that is now half time, and could you believe it? But Kelso Harlequins and Jed Thistle are locked all square on zero all. certainly knows his sevens at this time with, with Scotland sevens as well and obviously on the Kings of the Sevens circuit so and certainly these young players have got a, somewhat of a role model officiating this game but from the restart it's just uh, dribbled off the field to play and Jed Thistle throw into the line out and it's probably from here it was as squint as you like from the captain Mark Glenn but it's been allowed to play and Matthew Palmer now he just bounces back in field and then offloads the ball into the hands of uh, his teammate Bruce Weatherhead Mark Glenn again at the heart of absolutely everything for the Jed Thistle. Just ghosting about and then he's hoisted into the, into the air. 
and he was brought down with a bit of a thud but Andrew Skeen did have a quick look to his uh, touch judges and now it looks like Bruce Weatherhead is going to breach this Kelso Harlequin's defence for the first time in this final but eventually the ball just dribbles out but the, the referee Andrew Skeen spotting that there was an infringement there Mark Glenn now going forward charging towards the line and he's trying with all his might to breach this defensive effort that Kelso Harlequins are showing so far. It's almost the, the opposite of what we've seen in the first half. Jed Thistle now enjoying the lion's share of possession. And now over at the far side, in the hands of Xander McTaggart, who is holding the width and managing to stretch his Kelso defence. Kelso Quinn's managing to jackal that and get over that. Andrew Skeen quickly noticing that that ball was held in. And Kelso Harlequins now are going to have to try and attack from deep. Penalty taken. Getting through the hands now spread the field now managing to just find the gap here in the space out wide to try to put that on the toe but Mark Glenn is now there he's got some space in front of him and he's got a lot of teammates there in support but he's ghosting through he offloads to his teammate there Matthew Beaton and he is going to sail through the defensive line and get the first try in this final and it is first blood to Jed Thistle and can you believe we've waited nine minutes for the first try in a sevens game but it has been some game but it is a try for Jed Thistle Matthew Beaton Now that all came from that slightly uh, miscued kick there from the, from the Kelso winger and great defence from Jed you know, got that half tackle in forced a bad kick and then the captain picked up and, and, and almost did the rest himself and offloaded to Beaton and uh, he's a strong strong runner and he shrugged off the, the Kelso defender unfortunately for Jed they've missed the kick at goal so it's 5-0 instead of 7 you'd have put your money on uh, your house on, on uh, one of Robin Purdy's mortgages on that but um, he, he's unfortunately missed it so it's only 5-0 to Jed but you know, there's only 5 minutes to go so it's uh, ascendancy for Jed yeah, 5 0, and uh, Jed Thistle looking for a little bit of retribution after being beaten in the uh, Kelso Quinns final only last weekend. And it's uh, a great restart there, and the, the quality of these restarts is uh, something else as well. But Aaron Weatherhead looking to try and make amends for his misconversion, gives it into the hands of Palmer. Palmer now onto the try scorer, beaten, and he's. Uh, and certainly trying to beat a few of the opposition players up and does well to fight and get the ball back. It's now gathered by Bruce Weatherhead to his brother Aaron. Now Mark Glenn, and he goes one way, then the other. Great, great balance in his running and great offload out the tackle from Aaron Weatherhead as well. And now a miss out there to beat him, but it's drifted forward. Andrew Skeen just not happy with the, the angle of that pass. And Aaron Weatherhead as well, just having a little remonstration with some of his teammates maybe not happy with their position in there but uh, Jed Thistle certainly in the second half look a little bit more intent and attacking yeah definitely they've come out the, the, the blocks certainly a lot quicker than the, the Kelso lads in the second half and I think um, I think they were probably you know Weatherhead was probably thinking you know you'll probably see flat get a bit get a bit deeper give me a, give me a chance to find that pass you know because they do look very flat and attack the Jed the Jed attack and um you know, get that little bit of depth, make sure you can run out the ball and make sure you keep these back, uh, passes going backwards. Kelso Harlequins now trying to play rugby just inside their own five metre line, break free, just still inside their 22, but it's a huge hit there. And again, it was uh, Mark Glenn, I believe, who was in the thick of the action yet again. And it's now going to be a turnover ball, but the penalty is going to go the way of Kelso Harlequins for holding on on the deck. So it's a, a lit off there for Jed Thistle, but some big hits coming in for these uh, from these players now. Xander McTaggart in there as well. Kelso from the penalty kick downfield. I don't think they're going to find touch, but they're going to find the playmaker, Mark Glenn, a little hop step and a jump and then puts the afterburners on and then straight forward. But he perhaps was thinking a little bit more about the physicality of that play as opposed to trying to protect that ball. A little word as he retreats, but certainly that's an unforced error because he's been pretty much unblemished so far, but he's just a little faux pas there. Yeah, absolutely. He was looking for the contact there, I think, more than, than, than what's more effective in a sevens tie is getting the ball into space and keeping out of contact. And Especially when you look at the, the, the success Beaton's had, you know, let's get the ball in a bit more, let's get the ball in the width. Kelso Harlequins now trying to take the ball flat to the line, but Matthew Palmer again defensively. His effort's been pretty strong so far in this game. Does come to Mackenzie shot, and now offloaded back in field, and it's an initial palm off there, and it's a good play there from Fraser Murray, but eventually brought to ground, and again the bodies bundle in to try and stop Mackenzie Shaw cantering forward for Kelso Harlequins. You think a try here and a converted try could be all that's needed to win it. A minute and a half left in this final for the first ever Jim Telfer Cup. 
tell so Harlequins are going to have to try and keep the ball in hand Coulter he finds a teammate here and it looks like it's going to be Archie Barber to scold in towards the Jed Thistle half in towards the sticks and is he going to stretch in and he gets the ball down and it's a great attacking effort from Kelso Harlequins just being able to stretch the plate great slight of running as well and it's a, a very important position to get that kick from and this uh, misconversion attempt might come back to bite Jed Thistle yeah and that's what, just what I said when Jed scored you know you've got to make sure we, uh, you, you get your seven points when you've got the chance and five's always great but seven's so much better especially in such a tight game like this when it's nil-nil for the first nine minutes of the final and you know it's Kelso go here now and he gets his so it's 7-5 and that's the only difference still it was uh, again another excellent kick from the, the fly half who's calmly getting back towards the halfway line to get play underway and we've got about 20 seconds left according to my watch and there has been a, a change then again for Jed Thistle Edimonye comes on for Jed Thistle again and from the kick off the ball has been coughed up by Kelso Harlequins and do we have time left to get this set piece underway Andrew Skeen just a quick little look at his baby G watch but does say that there is going to be a, a scrum down so Jed Thistle will get to put into the scrum here and they're going to have to attack from deep to, to go to win this final at the death yeah if, if I was if Angus Arson there I'd have kicked, in the, kicked it right de deep into the corner you knew there was less than a minute to go Jed or well, make Jed score from 95 yards out you know don't, don't try and win the ball back but They've, they've got away with it and they've won the scrum so they've still got possession yeah pressure came on from the scrum there and it's uh, been a physical effort from Kelso Harlequins and now they're just sizing this up looking to kick this into the marquee on the banking side and Kelso Harlequins go back to back in sevens tournaments on the back of winning their own one last weekend who then are victorious here and win the first ever Jim Telfer Cup in what has been a, a great final. It has not been a high scoring final, but I'll tell you what, we witnessed some high scoring games in the, the early stages of this day, you know, with the likes of Tyndale and Edinburgh Uni and Durham Uni putting on some big scores and they probably weren't the most entertaining ties, but a 7.5 win against Jed Thistle could perhaps be one of the pick of the bunches of the games. No, superb, the two really good sides going at it and that's what I like to see and you know, defence was excellent. You, I, I can't think of a missed tackle in that in that game, and you know that's credit to both both sets of players. And you know they just really, really wanted it. And you know it's it's just I think it's I think it's just excellent for Borders Rugby. You know seven five, but it was a very, very exciting game to watch. Yeah, I've had conversations in this country this afternoon about how we need to harness us in the borders, and I, I cannot agree more. It has been a, it's been an excellent afternoon and early evenings entertainment in terms of rugby, Kelso narrow victors over Jed Thistle in the Jim Telfer Cup so it's been an action packed evening of rugby here on Borders Rugby TV but it's certainly been one that has been thoroughly entertaining as both teams just applaud each other as they exit the stage and just wait for the trophy lift but just a reminder that Kelso Harlequins are the victors over Jed Thistle by 7 points to 5 2 in a row then for Kelso Harlequins which means they go top of the table 26 points for them now Gala Wanderers 25 Peebles Colts and Jed Thistle sharing third with 21 and uh, Hoyt Youth in fifth place with 16 points so it's really hotting up in the semi juniors Yeah, it's amazing. Boys played great throughout the whole tournament. Just proved we stuck into the right end there. Got the win. It's a good game though, well played by Jed. It certainly was, but you were losing with just over a minute to go. Yeah, it just shows the depth we've got in the squad, bringing boys on, make a difference, get us over the line in the end. It's great. You never gave up, did you? No, pure, pure passion. Uh, How much does this mean to you and to the lads? Well, that's, that's, I think this is the first time Queens have ever won this, so... That means a lot. We won last week, so that's two in a row now. So it sets us up well for the rest of the sevens. Hopefully we can go well, win some more. What about being here at the Green Yards and playing in front of this amazing crowd? Yeah, it's a special place. Well, 
It's big on the sevens. The crowd's great. It helped us a lot. It's, yeah, it's a special place to play it. Well, well done to you. Let's see the trophy again. It's, it is the first time that trophy has been presented and you are the first team captain to lift it. Yeah, great feeling. Just so proud of everyone. Great to do it. Well done, William. Thank well done much. to the lads as well. Party well tonight, but no drink, remember? No, keep it easy. <laughs> William Tweedy, the skipper of the Kelso Harlequins. Thank you.